um but yeah you got a big one coming up tomorrow how you yeah feeling? i'm so i'm getting one tomorrow and uh i'm feeling good i'm excited um i'm not um really filling my mind with oh is it gonna hurt because obviously yeah. like i already know it's not gonna it's not gonna tickle yeah, yeah it's not it's, gonna tickle yeah. you know that's the whole point of um should i share what it is yeah what is it gonna be about what's what's it gonna be what's it gonna look like so um it's just hey guys welcome back to famous or not we're happy i'm enrique i'm crystal and today is monday yes it is january uh 17th something teen 17th yeah <laughs> yeah cool it's martin luther king day that's right january 17th a lot of people are not going to work so hopefully you're watching this yeah instead of you know while you're at home yes <sighs> well today we wanted to talk about something very special yeah something very new to us yes which is tattoos which is tattoos both getting our uh very first tattoos yeah well i got my first tattoo pretty small just you know three triangles i got it with some siblings um but yeah you got a big one coming up tomorrow How you yeah feeling? i'm so i'm getting one tomorrow and uh i'm feeling good I'm excited. Um, I'm not um, really filling my mind with, oh, is it going to hurt? Because obviously, yeah. like, I already know it's not going to... It's not going to tickle. Yeah, yeah it's not going to tickle. Yeah. You know, that's the whole point of um, getting the tattoo. Mm -hmm. And it's also kind of cool because in a way, having gone through that... Um, I mean, I, don't, I haven't gotten it yet, so I don't really know if it's um, painful. Really painful for you? Yeah. yeah. Like, for me personally. Yeah. Um, in my pain tolerance. But um, experiencing that, it also makes it worth having because yeah. it's like, yeah. You, you got, you went through something to yeah. get something. Yeah. 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 I think that's, I think that's why a lot of people probably love tattoos because it's like, yeah, you, you put, you have to put up a fight, you know, you can't quit. Yeah. In order to get something um, meaningful in your body. Yeah. It's a beautiful process. I mean, this is... Tattoos have been around forever. Yeah. Um, I know the crazy techniques they used before, in, you know, just sticks and needles. And yes. Like just chipping away a, a body with yeah. ink. Well, before even that, it was just um, scarring your body oh, so instead okay. of having ink they would scar their bodies which um i know everyone has had a scar before and yeah. it raises above the skin a mm -hmm. scar raises above the skin so you could sort of feel that scar so what um these tribes would do is they would scar their body with all these beautiful markings um you know whether that's like triangles or these yeah. arrows and lines and what that meant to them which is really cool to see how much it has evolved yeah from that to then they found a way you know whether that was like um using berries to create their own mm, ink and then different colors yeah, yeah. And then up till now, how we've modernized it until this really Huge culture. Yeah, it's a really big culture around like, it. There's a lot of societies just around tattoos. Yeah. Clubs and stuff. Yeah, which is really cool to see. It is really cool. And a lot of different styles, too. Yes. You know, like a lot of famous artists and stuff. Yeah. And there's like there's new styles that are coming out every day, um, as well as colors like you know now getting like a pastel yeah tattoo which is i know it's cool to see like um when someone has like a you know covered in tattoos their whole body but it's all one style or yes. color yes like palette yes that's always super cool because it's they treated their you know it's our temple yeah like it's you know so they treated like this is how i want it to look yeah which is super cool very cool 
And tattoos, they can they can either um, have a meaning, or you could just simply yeah. like that thing, which is fun too. It's, it's like true, or just oh, be I drunk just liked one day. It. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or I lose mean, lose a bet or something. Yeah, yeah. It's like a funny story to tell, or it can be. Yeah, and it's also interesting uh, people's takes on it, though. Like since how you just said, like our body is our temple. Yeah, but. Certain people can be um, closed off to tattoos. Like, why would you want to get a tattoo on your body? However, our body being our temple. Yeah. Okay. There are, are these beautiful, famous churches, which is also a temple mm. that people go to. Why do they visit these churches and cathedrals? Because there's so much beautiful art. Mm. in a temple same way we treat our body yeah. our body is our temple why would you not want to fill it with art yeah and when people are always like you, you they're not going to want you in church yeah. like that or even work or even work yeah like, you know a lot of jobs won't hire people because they have tattoos yeah it's just bullshit it's like like, bro, it's just their, it's their tattoo. It's their temple. Like, they, they decided to do that. Yeah. Like, so what? It's but, you know, yeah, I think tattoos um, have a, some, a lot of bad rep. Yeah. I mean, definitely, um, you know, it depends what tattoo, you know, if it's very yeah, expensive um, and doesn't have any positive yeah that's true um meaning or a representation of it yes i could i could very you know understand that yeah certain signs and symbols that people put on their body and i'm like oh okay i know exactly <laughs> what your beliefs are already yeah, you don't true. even need to further explain but um choosing something that uh, is beautiful and um to share with other people is a really cool experience. You yeah. Know? It It's fun when people have tattoos because you could just look at them and um, be like, oh, they might, you know, if you have a tattoo of, you know, like a dog. Yeah. Like, maybe it's a dog of theirs that passed away that meant so much to them. I kind of want to, yeah, you know, uh, bring up a conversation of how much, like, how was your relationship with this dog, you know, enough for you to tattoo the dog on your body or mm -hmm. a symbol of it. And, you know, like, if, whether it's just like a little paw print or something like that, which yeah. is, you know, it's fun. It's even a conversation yeah. starter. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Even something small could spark a conversation relationship with someone yeah even like you know when you know you're in your uh in your coffin yeah like if you have that's a whole the only bunch thing of you tattoos take it's like yeah that's the only with thing you. you take your tattoos and your body and even when they see i mean you're all dressed up in a coffin but um, I feel like it'd be cool to like see like all the tattoos of that body on the coffin. Yeah. In the coffin, like, oh shit, he he liked this and she liked that. Like that's cool. Yeah. Even I, though I'm pretty sure I mean if you're going to someone's funeral, probably know him. I mean, I don't know, to be <laughs> honest. I don't I don't remember going to a funeral. I haven't I think I've gone to one my whole life when I was a little kid. And um I they don't have know, any I don't tattoos? Know, uh, I don't know if I went to a funeral, actually. Or I think it was just um, a cemetery. And we'd always just go visit a loved one. Oh, okay. But I'd always see the funerals. Yes. You know, my, my childhood memory is a little hazy. But yeah, I don't think I've ever been to a funeral. Probably once. Have you been to a funeral? Yeah. Um, Do you remember? Oh, yeah. You have vivid memories? Yes. And the emotions you went Ye through? Yeah. Yeah. I've been to uh, two funerals, mm. it, both as me being um, a child, mm -hmm. and I'm glad that my parents let me go because I yeah. feel that um, oftentimes as a child, 
people will not want to bring their kids to funerals. But why would you try and hide that from them? Yeah. You know, like... It's a part of life. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I definitely remember, like, seeing, you know, them that, you know... Alive still? No, dead. Oh, in the coffin? Yeah, the past loved one and, you know, like... Do I, you remember them seeing... A, do you remember them alive, too? Of and course, then, like, yeah. as a little kid, while you're at the funeral, you're like, wow. Yeah. Like, I'm never, never going to hear them talk again or something. Yeah. Um, Dang, that's crazy. It's a different experience, and you experience it different at whatever age you are. Yeah. Like, as a child, I didn't really want to look. Like, I do a quick glance and then kind of just, um, I kind of tried ignoring it. Our Even funeral? myself. Mm. When, while like I the was emotions there. and everything. Yeah, you emotions just, and everything. I was kind of like. Let's get this over with, kind of. Well, not really like that, like rushing through it, but, um. I don't know. I did it. I don't think I was able, uh, being a child as well, um, I wasn't able to fully process my emotions. So I kind of just like um, ignored them and numbed mm. it and just like sat through it. But um, yeah, definitely don't. Yeah, I wonder if a lot of kids, you know, like acknowledge or even like really think about it. Like, um, like that's a dead body. Yeah. But then that kind of says, like, the adults, you know, the older ones, they think about it way too much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Compared to just kids, like you said, just kind of like, uh, don't really look at it. Don't acknowledge it. Just acknowledge it, but just to a certain extent. Don't yeah. think about it too much. Too much. Too You know? <laughs> <laughs> and maybe that's because I was probably around, like, Mm, eight nine years old but i feel as if um i have if i would have went to one where i was like four or five i would have been like oh they're sleeping mm. like i wouldn't have uh acknowledged that they're not physically here with us i would have just been like oh they're sleeping it's okay they're just sleeping but then when i was like eight to nine i was like oh they're physically not here with us. Yeah, at different ages, yeah. you have different, you have different knowledge. Yeah, you, you you know more. You you feel more. Yeah, and now if I were to go in, I would have been like, oh, they're in their next transformation. Yeah, it's it doesn't end. It's just they're on their new journey here. You from think? Now. Do, you, do you think it's right away? Like when we die? Yeah, it's right away. It's instant. Or you think like you die? Your spirit kind of chills with you, your soul, your higher self kind of chills. The coffin with you takes its time to say goodbye. Like, are you asking if I think that our soul stays in within our body? Yeah. No, not at all. Instantly, you think it's yes, gone? Yes, it's gone. The moment your, your heart starts beating? Yes. So you do think there's something else? Yes, of course. Because... Our body's only the vehicle for our soul. Yeah. So as as soon as that vehicle's done, boom, it's it's gone onto from that vehicle. vehicle. Yeah, onto its next vehicle or next upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> you upgrade. <laughs> You're like, oh, this this vehicle was made in two thousand. I'm in the. I'm gonna go to the next one. We're going to three thousand fifty. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Personal belief asking, yeah. Yeah, me too. I was just, you know, wondering. wondering. Yeah. Um, You know, it's always good to wonder. Yeah. Just don't get lost in it. Yeah. But. Don't get lost in the sauce. Yeah. <laughs> Going back to um tattoos. Yeah. When we first started. The tribes. Um, tribes have some crazy ass tattoos that I feel like nowadays. Like, if you, if you still want to feel like part of that tribe yes. that were, like, thousands of years ago, your tattoos would be a lot less complex. Yes. You think? Oh, for sure. Like, all the crazy face tats that... Well, not crazy. I mean, that's just how, you know, like I said, like, society nowadays would think that's crazy. But to them, that was beautiful. Yes. Like, the... 
you know, just huge lines and their face and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, a lot of them are seeing beautiful. like a line going down the middle of their face. That's a whole tattoo on their like, chin. Yeah. Um That ain't that ain't coming off with water. No. And then the way too, like we said, like the way they would get it done, like yes. scarring your whole face with the line. Yes. Like, that'd be that's intense. Have you ever s- actually like looked up and seen pictures of it? I think so. It's wait it, of tattoos, yeah, but of how they do it, no. How they? Oh, okay. Just like the finished product. The finished when product. When it's all healed and it looks like, dang, that's cool. Yeah. But the actual process of it. Yeah. No, I haven't. You have. Um. Yeah. You, did, a, you did a lot of research going into this tattoo, huh? No. Um. So. My one of the classes I took in high school actually. Mm. they taught us all about this because um taking fashion you had to learn different dif- different cultures fashions mm. whether that was a physical item that you were wearing or um anything on your body basically their ideal standard of beauty um it was very interesting to learn and that was one of them like um scarring tattoos Mm. We, because tribes still practice this yeah. um, in Africa or uh, their rural places around the world. Yeah, the Mayans had the huge holes. Where were the holes at? Um, were they in the lips or in the ears? Or they just had a whole bunch of like circles and lines on their faces too? Yes. When, and then when we learned about that, they'd do a. They'd have cross eyes. Yes, that's also another thing. Like, um, I think it's very interesting to learn other cultures and tribes' ideal beauty standards. Yeah. How, like, when when we um, visited Yucatan, um, they were telling us how um, the Mayan culture that they thought it was beautiful to have cross eyes. Yeah. And... You know, like, in America, they're like, oh, don't, you know, when you tease as a kid and you you cross your eyes and they're like, no, don't do that. It's going to get stuck like that, you know? Like, that all started from somewhere. Yeah. Which is so cool. Which is so cool. Another crazy one is, um, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but foot binding. Oh, yeah. the Didn't the Chinese do that? Yes. Yes, and these tiny little itty bitty shoes, they'd bind their foot like in half, their like feet. the front part to the heel of the foot, and just like put it like that and put it in the shoe. Damn. Yeah, which is you know, and but it, that's just their way of beauty and what made them happy. Yeah, and it's like you know we we view that as oof, that's painful. Yeah. Why would you want to go through that? But then nowadays, it's like the waist trainers. Yes. Like, that's the same thing. I mean, yeah, it's just not crazy to talk about right now because we're living it. Exactly. Just like how them, when they did that, it wasn't crazy to talk about. But now it's a little like more unique now. Yeah. At least for us, too. I mean, we're in a whole different fucking country. But yeah, it's very interesting. Um, definitely do research if you are going to. Do something like that because I, I feel as if um, the waist trainer is being targeted towards women, and yeah, it's easy for those who are vulnerable to um, accept that ideal beauty standard, even though they don't. Majority of them probably don't know that it's squishing their organs mm-hmm. between their rib cage. Yeah, crazy. And our bo- and your bones. Yeah. Your spine is closing in. Your ribs are closing in. Yeah. All in your intestines, your liver, everything. Very interesting. Painful. Yeah, no, I remember seeing like the, you know, the the girls that always go crazy with it. and. Yeah. Like their waist is literally like this big. Oh, this yeah. Wide. It's um, like, that's like a show on TLC. Probably. I think I saw it on like the Snapchat stories like four years ago. Oh, yes. I was like, those what? Snapchat stories? Yo, those Snapchat stories were crazy sometimes, man. They're crazy. You'd learn a lot, but a lot of crazy shit. 
So just kind be careful stuff, out there. It's kind of stuff that you like did not need to know. Yeah. Didn't ask for, but it just popped up on your Snapchat. But then the algorithm was like, oh, you saw it. You're gonna, we're going to keep on feeding you yes, it. And then, yes. you know, it's like you said, it's you don't want to watch it. But, but it's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and then the algorithm just keeps on feeding you it. And then yeah. you just kind of fall Im- immune to it, and then you just like it. Yeah. Thank God I, we got rid of Snapchat, though, so we can't yeah. watch those. I remember one specifically where this uh, lady truly believed she was a cat. Mm. And, like, slept in a cat bed. and I remember seeing one. Ate out of, out of a cat bowl and went on the little cat scratcher thing. And went to the restroom on the litter and everything. Yeah. No. Yeah. You no. Think so? She fully like played the role. Like she pooped on in the litter box. I don't know. They didn't, they didn't show that. They part, didn't show that course. part. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I didn't want to watch it in the first place. Um. But you were there clicking along. But yeah, I was mindlessly clicking, and I, and then I couldn't stop, and I was like, "What? That's no all, way! That all that social media, all that is all that is fake dopamine." Yeah. Like those likes, the the cool videos, like likes mo- um, is the biggest like thing though of fake dopamine. Yeah. You know, real dopamine is going out for a run, mm-hmm. going out for a walk, hugging your loved ones, texting your loved ones, even texting them. Yeah. Feeling that you know. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, different. Talking to um, them. Hugging, yeah, but yeah. Oh, before I got sidetracked, um, I saw one of this dude who would, who l- literally loved his car so much, and it was like his girlfriend. A car was this dude's like girlfriend, and would just do everything with it. Yeah. And I was like, what? A very interesting. Um, I don't know. They're like. Um, feeling a void of some type but it's like how did this even like start get extreme to that point yeah oh tlc had that one show my strange addiction yes that one was crazy yes i remember the girl that he uh Brick. mattresses oh yeah and brick bricks yeah this girl would eat brick i've never seen that one yeah how did her teeth they showed it and she's like <laughs> <laughs> you hear the crunch and then I, and you know she she went to the dentist and they're like oh well your teeth are gonna break soon and she yeah kinda stopped and then there was the girl who loved smelling gas oh no and she went to the doctor and you can't be smelling this on the and daily it's so bad for you was there any brain cells left i don't remember <laughs> probably not <laughs> <laughs> a um, couple i remember one where uh it was this woman who ate toilet paper Mm. And they'd show her, like, at work, and she'd be like, mm, this is a good shit. And yeah. she'd, be, she'd be, like, What's so cra- wrapping the roll up around her hand, and she'd be like, I just put it in my pocket and take a little, like, Snap. cotton candy. or Oh, yeah, I've seen this. She would tear it apart. Yeah, like the little square. She snacks. was like, yes. Mm-mm-mm. And they're just like. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Like, I hope you don't put no seasoning on that. <laughs> <laughs> but what's so interesting about all those addictions is, like, that's, um their way of happiness yeah like that's what makes them happy yeah us you know different things makes us happy traveling makes us happy yeah for them for them like they're strange species and they're still humans but you know for her girl who likes eating toilet paper like just imagine her experience going to go buy that those rolls of toilet paper Mm, that must she's be like, her favorite aisle in the grocery yeah, store. <laughs> That's crazy. She's like, I got to pack from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> now, nah, no judgment. I'm just saying uh, that might not be healthy, though. Yeah. We don't suggest that. I wonder. I think all those episodes are probably on YouTube. You could just go watch them and learn a couple things. Yeah. Don't eat this. Don't smell this. Don't put this on your body. <laughs> yes. Um... Very the science, the science behind tattoos, though. Have you seen the uh, slow motion videos of the needles going in and out of the skin? 
No. It so punctures I punctures the actually punctures the skin, I believe, but it doesn't reach, you know, because there's different layers yeah. of the skin, so it doesn't reach the layer of where the blood is basically being held in. Oh, that's right. So doesn't it does I don't it know only go to the second skin. layer? I believe so. That's where the the ink sits, I think. Okay. I think. I not, think. Don't quote me on it. We're but not sure. I saw a video of it a while ago. And you see the needle like penetrating the first first layer for sure. I don't know if it penetrates more, but yeah. Also, what a cool um, you occupation to have. Oh, to to be a tattoo artist. Yeah. Hell yeah. If like that, that's so cool. I mean, to be able to decorate all, every uh, all these people's bodies yeah. that you know on a daily basis, and also when you're doing that of course you create a connection with these people yeah you know you're letting them know um what tattoo you want and it kind of allows them to know a little bit more about you as well going to them and why it's so meaningful and if the person getting the tattoo is like talkative yeah you know they could get into some deep ass conversations i bet yeah especially if it's a long tattoo like you can't. I mean, you probably could. I don't know. There's just a person silent the whole time. Four hour tattoo, just silence. Yeah, some people okay. may like that. That's yeah. okay though. But I feel like um, I'm excited for you to get it. Yes, I'm very excited. You guys will probably show you maybe on the next podcast. On the next podcast, you'll have it. Yeah. Um, should I share what it is? Yeah. What is it going to be about? What's what's it going to be? What's it going to look like? So, um, it's the sun and moon mm -hmm. that have faces. Okay. Each of them have a face or they create one face? Uh, each. The, both the, the sun has a face and then the moon has a face. Oh, okay. And there's, um, they're in love. So... It's the sun, then the moon, with their faces um, towards each other. Mm. And then on one side, it has the sun's rays. And then on the other side, which is of the moon, says everything happens for a reason. Mm. Uh, the reason why I chose this is... Tell so, us. So, <laughs> obviously, sun is light. Yeah. Moon, darkness. Yin and yang. Yin and yang vibe. Yeah, exactly. So just your taste, just your twist of a yin and yang. Yes. I it's funny, it's cool because I eventually want to get a yin and yang tattoo yin as well. Yin yang tattoo. Yeah, so it's also a representation of yin and yang. Um with so the reason why I wanted them to be in love is to represent unity. Mm -hmm. Because just like uh light and darkness yeah they're in unity together exactly what yin and yang resembles you know you can't have um you know and the good there's a little bit of bad and in the bad there's a little bit of good yeah it goes hand in hand and then the quote everything happens for a reason um that's something i've always told myself ever since i was a little girl like I don't know why or where this really came from, but if when it stuff would happen, I just tell me myself like, oh, everything happens for a reason. Mm. So that's even like the bad and the good. Yeah, it, like every time, like instead of kind of questioning why that happened, I would just always say everything happens for a reason, which then also ties into my belief of divine um, timing in mm. everything in my life is divine timing whether yeah. it's a uh, event that happens that i feel is uh bad or uh something that i've been working towards and you know maybe i got it a week later instead of when i wanted it you know everything happens divine timing um so that's, that's cool. pretty much what why i chose that tattoo Do you want to tell us where it's going to be at or you want to surprise them Want to surprise us with the with the location of the tattoo? No, uh, oh, surprise. Yeah, Do you have it already? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, so you guys will see that uh, next 
next, next episode. episode yeah. yeah. So stay tuned if you want to see how that um, idea came to life. How swole your arm's going to be. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it won't yes. be that swole. But. Um, when I got my tattoo, it was like at this. I forgot. What's the name of the tattoo shop? Oh, that was at uh, Coolsville. Coolsville? Yeah, was Coolsville. It's like world famous for fast tattoos or some shit. Yeah, like $10 tattoos. But the $10 tattoos. And it wasn't only, $10. No, and we only went there because it's, it's small. So we were like, oh, if they do these little ones for 10 bucks. They could knock it out real quick, which they did. It took like six, eight minutes for the three tattoos with one shaded in. Yeah. But I think the you know the tattoo artist they're just so because there was a line and we waited in there for like forty minutes and they're just so rushed and you know they just want to pump it out just keep the line moving so they just have heavy hands that way they don't have to go over it again yeah so I like I bled a lot which is crazy because it's just three tattoos and it was bleeding for a good amount. Which hurt, especially once it hit the little, this little uh, wrist bone. I felt it. I felt it rattle like my elbow. I was like, God damn, bro. You were like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> my arm started dancing. <laughs> but you're going to get in a fairly tissue area. Yeah. No bones. Um, No. Which it's is perfect. Pretty for, meaty. For a good, for a first tattoo. Yeah. I eventually want to get my whole left sleeve um, full, like a whole left sleeve. Yeah. And then probably a whole leg. I don't know which one. But. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah it's ex- fun. I'd, I'd be excited for that. I'm going to be excited for that, too. I mean, I'm excited now, but I still don't. Re- I have ideas, concepts, but no final. Like set. Set this one. This is what I want. Yeah. Yeah. Just rough drafts. Yeah. I don't think you should go based off rough drafts. No. I mean, you could. Whatever makes you happy. But I personally would like to get a a set idea. Would you, are you going to, would you prefer to sketch out your idea and then present it? Like pretty much. So I had like sketched out my idea. Oh, yeah. But I'm not an artist. So I took, I sent it to the artist. A rough draft. Yeah, a rough draft. And she like finalized it. Yeah, this is. I it. pretty much. Um, she drew it and everything, huh? Well, I don't know the final oh, yet until tomorrow. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I just sent the artist my idea and my vision of kind of what I wanted, and I was like, "But I want this in your style yeah. of um, drawing, like mm-hmm. your art, because I, you know, that's also another uh, important thing is like." Finding an artist that you like their art. Yeah, their style. Yeah, their style. And everything that they do. I you know, it's it's important um to find an artist that at least like eighty percent of their work you like, even if it's not something you t- like tattoo on your body. Yeah. Instead of that one like, oh, I found this artist and they made this cool one. tattoo. But yeah. it's this only one. The rest I don't like that they do of their yeah, work. That, you know? That's you're you're just like dr- flipping a coin because what if they got lucky on making it that good that one time? Yeah, right? or just your specific preference, yeah, of, like that type of style, mm-hmm. you know. That's smart. Making sure you like at least eighty percent of their work, their their usual day to day work. Yeah, because then you know it's that's what they specialize in. Yeah. So you exactly. won't, you know, your your tattoo would come out. Within that style that you, you know prefer. exactly how it's gonna come out, kind of. Yeah. But you were gonna ask me if I would sketch mine out. I think I would. Yeah. Would you sketch yours out or just show a picture? I'd most likely, unless it's like a super good artist that, you know, their art is super, super, super good, and I don't know. But I feel like I'm gonna end up. I'd still end up, obviously, giving my, my um. A little rough draft, basically. Kind of your take in it. Yeah. Of, like, the idea. But if it's something that I'm not too sure about, then I'll probably ask, you know, him or her, like, hey, can you draw something? And then I'll draw something, and then we'll see which I like works. What if I like what they did? Yeah. 
you know, tell them to draw it first. Well, we draw it, you know, one each, and then we mix them together. Yeah. That's pretty cool. My next tattoo, though, wanted to be big. So it's just a, you know, nice little simple one, quick one. But next one, wanted to cover up, like, a good portion of my arm. Yeah. So I want a yin and yang. I want an eyeball. I want the shape of the universe. I want the shape of the universe, not the shape of a galaxy. It's different. Um, and an animal, probably a gorilla. I'm really set on a gorilla. But then, for some reason, lately I've been thinking about a monkey. Just like a chimp. But I think a gorilla would be cool. I'm still kind of still like you know firm on that. Yeah, uh, that's but also another cool concept is um, black and white. You're gonna are you are you trying to do a whole sleeve? Um, oh, you haven't really thought about it. I have. I mean, I'm set for uh, for both. Just depends on how much I want to tattoo on my body of you know like actual stuff that I'm like oh yes this and this, yeah. this and this. So I'm kind of just taking it one at a time until like I have this other concept also a strong one that yeah. you truly like yeah also i feel like uh just growing like the more i grow the more i learn mm. and i feel like tattoos are great to have these daily reminders i know another one is a fire like i want to get fire um a like flame. a flame yeah a flame uh tattooed on me just because I am a fire sign, but also to remember what is my burning desire. Mm. Like, what is my burning desire? You could tie that into, like, your burning desire with your sign. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. And it's, it means kind of two things in one. It's your sign plus your burning desire. Yeah. Because I also feel is like... Is a I, burning desire a goal? Yeah. Like, purpose. Right? Okay, my purpose. burning that makes more desire sense. of what it is that I wake up for. What is it that I okay. want to achieve and do? And also, I was kind of thinking like a goal. What if once you reach that goal, like, you know, you're going to look oh. at your tattoo like, oh, check mark. No. That makes sense. So a purpose. Yeah, yeah. Waking up. Your reason to wake up basically. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. Like kind of like uh, towards like the wrist or on my hand type of uh, placement because. Yeah. You know whether you're you're going to shake someone's hand or write mm. something or pick something up, you'll be remembered like in that present moment. Oh, that's right, I have a burning desire. So to you see it most of the day, basically. Yeah. That one, that one tattoo, will be your hourly reminder. Yeah. That'd be cool. Not really reminder, more like, yeah, it's a tattoo. Yeah, like it is a reminder yeah. in a way. Yeah, I would say as a reminder. Lose motivation one day. <laughs> Look at my arm. Um, I mean. Ben 10 Alien Force. You hit the watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know that show? Um, Is that the one with the green hair? No, he had, I think he has like brown hair with a white shirt. And he has a big ass watch, and then he could select which creature he wants to turn into, and then he hits it. Is that the one that has the dog? No, he, I think you're th talking about Johnny Test. Johnny oh, Test yeah. is with the dog with the two twin sisters. Yeah, I don't think I know Ben Ten. The one, the green one. That's um. Was that was the karate? Um. Was it karate? A green kid? A green boy? No. Oh, no. I'm thinking of a cartoon that... Are you thinking about the Martian? The green Martian with the purple suit? Teen Titans? Yes. That's exactly what I'm thinking of is Teen Titans. The robot dude. And then you have the creature. The, the green... The green guy. And then you have um the girl. Two girls. The I think one's invisible. And then the other one purple one has like um laser eyes or some shit yeah don't really remember but yeah teen titans was tight was teen titans was tight <laughs> that was a nice show 
next episode we're gonna be talking about our childhood cartoons now um what were you gonna say before i interrupted you with something um i sort of lost my train of thought um oh just like how tattoos are also oh how you um spoke of that you wanted to possibly get a tattoo of a gorilla yeah or a monkey um it's also a cool way to tattoo your spirit animal on you yeah um i I, spirit animals are very um it's a good way to embody an energy Mm -hmm. of how you um like either tackle situations or um just the way of your being like yeah. uh fully embodying that energy of how that animal acts yeah gorillas have a special part in my heart i mean when we went to the zoo they were just so i just wanted to see it face to face yeah i wanted to be so close to it but they're far they're eating they're they they have a lot of uh character those animals they they know they're super smart like one had its back turned to us cuz it was eating yeah i thought that was so funny like that's tight why cuz at first we just saw him with his turn with his back turned towards us and then we went towards the left and we saw a different angle then that's when you see him just munching it's like ah oh, that's why he's He's like, man, I don't want the audience to be looking at me right now. I don't want to look at them. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. That must be crazy, huh? To be a smart animal like that and just always seeing people seeing you. Yeah, be uh, trapped in a enclosure and just act as if you're not this majestic being that... Yeah. It's sad almost. Yes. But then it's like we still go yeah but it's i think i think we go though because it's like you where else would you see them in live here at least in the states yeah you know? it you know, is you want to see an animal that majestic that beautiful in real life it's like you can't in real life i mean you could go on your phone and stuff but that's not real life yeah or go travel there to the place but it's of course not of access you know as easily to go um see the way these animals interact at a zoo and um but then again we kind of have to come to an understanding as humans that animals are not for entertainment yeah like they're truly not i wonder what the zoo keepers do to make those animals happy do they have playtime with him and stuff? I think so. Or they just feed them and that's it and just clean their enclosures. Yeah, it depends. Depends on it how de- that zoo's operating. It depends. I feel like, old. too, on the zookeepers, if they just look at it as a job. Yeah. It's just a damn job. But if you do it like it's a passion and you love animals, then I think that's when they could really start making the animals feel like themselves and not just animals yeah you know it's like man they have they have a heart they have their own souls they have their own brain yeah you know you know we are mammals so of course like everything that they that we feel they feel yeah they have a nervous system they feel pain they they know the like feel like once i don't know animals they they have the same emotion as us the emotion of love and that's the strongest emotion we all carry yeah so the fact that people abuse animals and kill them just even bugs like you know i try my best to not even kill bugs because i'm like man they have their own families yes (laughs) you know that's no Um, it's so true though i feel you because um you know i used to being raised in society just alone you're kind of like bug yeah kill it but it's like 
Why? It's like We're he acts. All... This bug accidentally got here. Like, it's it. It's his fault. It's not its fault. He don't know where he's at, anyways. Just, take him outside it's okay yeah or like um even being outside you're kind of like oh you see a bug on the ground like let me step on it like why do we have that instinct that's Hurt. been built in us to he just living the same way i'm living i wouldn't want someone to come and just hit slap you slap me yeah the way i just did that to um a the earthling bug. that's just he's just on earth too he didn't ask yeah. to be here necessarily you know it's a different take to have, and I, I think that comes when you um, stop eating animals, really. Yeah, that's true. Because even, I mean, these these a lot of animals get tattoos, too. Meaning, they get uh, numbered. Oh, yeah. You know, Markings. Marked. They're like, yeah, I'm 42, homeboy. What you get? <laughs> 44, <laughs> damn. But yeah, that could be. We could talk about that in a whole another episode. Yeah. Of animal cruelty and nah, not animal cruelty. Just on how we we see um, animals different. Yeah, I do definitely want to talk about that because that's been such a big change in my life yeah um just for those who are listening we've been um vegan for about two years yeah ish so um you'll hear like that'll be a whole nother podcast in its own and um just yeah, you that'd know be cool you know just talk about how we went into being vegan and why and yeah our experience and what, our beliefs now and yeah how it's our beliefs progressed been. yeah yeah for sure. Not letting society um, influence you anymore. Yeah, don't stop letting them, like, control you. Like, truly, um, you know, there's just a lot of food that looks colorful and good. But in reality, it's super bad for your body. For your body. It's just, uh, and most animals. of it, most of it, I believe, is just control. Like, yeah, you won't feel it now, but once your body starts growing old... They're going to catch all those, you know, acids, all those different dyes in your food catch up to you. And then that's when you have to rely on pills. Then that's when you have to rely on the government, which is controlling you, which is you're just going to be giving all your money to them once you're, you know, trying to retire. Straight facts. Yeah. The government feeds you bullshit so you can then go spend millions on these big pharma companies and just have and you just have to rely on them yeah it's a constant cycle it's just a circle like they yeah. give you cheap but then it's like that's the thing too it's like most of it is cheap you know yeah like, it, like it's there's always that conversation of it's what i could afford it's it's what's closest to me like what if it's someone who the closest store is a fucking mickey d's a mcdonald's and you know the kids are hungry of course they because just came home from school and, but the government knows what the hell they're doing they they put it there for a fucking reason yeah it's been placed it's systematically planted. it's a whole game in these certain areas that are not fully educated on health because they have been restricted they don't have as many um, available sources for healthy food. I mean, potatoes are cheap. Yeah. They're Just like a Big Mac cheap, is, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, honestly, like it, yeah, it goes sure. to that. Yeah. It's one of the cleanest carbohydrates you could get. Yeah. If not the cleanest, just like with rice. Yeah. Potatoes. I would say bread, but there's a lot of bread out there that yeah rice and beans stuff. yeah rice and beans yeah so that that'll definitely be a whole podcast in itself so um yeah but tying it all together starting this conversation with tattoos yes and ending it with food have you ever seen that one picture of this guy who got a tattoo of a mcdonald's receipt on his forearm receipt yeah he got a whole like his receipt <laughs> on his forearm yeah. I no, I've never seen that. You've never seen it? I've never seen that. 
it's just a plain old receipt on his arm from McDonald's. I'm like, what? Very interesting. I wonder why. I need to get him on here. A whole receipt. They'll be. Yeah. That's so when he goes to McDonald's and he's like, this is the order. The usual. Right, right here. here. He's like, he's like, sweetheart, if you don't already know by now, <laughs> this the order. This the usual. The cashier asks him, what do you want? He doesn't even say a word. He just whips out his phone arm. Maybe he was so tired of being asked that question, what do you want at McDonald's? Where he was like, I just need to go ahead and tattoo it. But then he can never go through the drive-thru. Yeah, that's right. Then there's no way for them to know. Then he'd have to speak. Cool. Well, you guys have something for to look. You guys have something for to look. You guys. (laughs) (laughs) I said that backwards. Um, yeah, but next episode, you guys will see her, her yeah, tattoo. Well, I'll show you my tattoo and then be on the lookout for, um, our experience of eating plant-based. Yeah. That'll be a podcast sometime soon. It's not a big deal, but yeah. Yeah. Um, also, you, don't want, you, don't, you know, later on, we're going to do a book review of yeah. a book that we have Some recently books. read and um that's made us happy yeah what we learned from it and how it's changed our um view on certain things our perspective on this game of life we yes. all play yes then you guys just um just think about this life as a as a game like truly that that's one big like cheat code in this life is realizing that it is a game yeah at least living within this country i feel like yes i think if you live and i can't really talk in those terms but this is just what i believe you know living outside of this country you it's not no longer like a true game it's kind of you know once you live somewhere super tropical or something it's like man you don't you don't really have the government trying to fucking always control you yeah but that was one big thing um I took from a book was seeing it, uh, seeing this, this, this life we live as a game, and not falling into the the norm, the normal, yeah, life. Which is crazy, cause like the game of life is literally a physical game. Yeah, and it's like, and that's what a lot of people bro, live. Yeah, you spend the little thing, and it's like, oh, you're going to college, cool, and then you land on three kids. And yeah. then you land on this and it's a like, new man, car and who's, whose life am I living right now? Yeah. Sarah's from down the street. <laughs> Freddy's from over there. Like, that's his life. Like, what the hell? It's yeah. the game of life. And a lot of, you know, there's another book. It's like a lot of people believe that this game of life is just Monopoly. Yeah. It's like, it's just real estate or just assets you know yeah just um valuable assets liability or assets over over liabilities yes learned that from my uh accounting class nice but i think you want to say anything to wrap it up no that was just some nice little sneak sneak peek some some uh what's coming up you know what we'll we'll talk about and then soon also we'll get um some guests finally yes we'll We'll have guests guests. uh very soon Um, very very soon yes leave a comment right now if you want to be a guest if you live in las vegas yeah if you don't live in las vegas and you want to you know take a plane here or drive here then just just leave a comment please don't be shy don't be shy i mean we're here to create uh nice place of community and just uh create our own thing which we already told you guys but yeah i think Mm. this wraps it up for this one and we'll see you guys on the next one bye bye